this section is actually redundant because uh, everything before this chapter was about soul work. Yet, um, to give this chapter a logical conclusion, I will be writing briefly about um, this component. As you can uh, look at the diagram, in normal people, the soul is imprisoned. Then through the practice of the earlier five components of meditation, that soul is liberated. Now it can do soul work, like we would do physical work. What soul work is, we talked about in length in the earlier chapters. It is about uh, doing things, going places, and being various identities. Soul work is also about uh, merging with the meta soul. Soul work also means having all kinds of uh, superpowers. With soul work, you can truly be free. After completing the uh, five components, especially the mind work, your soul will have uh, the capacity to uh, explore the spiritual world like an well-equipped exploration team with all the tools and technologies needed to bring back the findings. This is as opposed to um, somebody who just stumbles into uh, a new place without any plan or uh, tools. That person is not prepared and uh, has no clue about what to look for and what to bring back. Most important, that person doesn't know how to bring anything back. In addition, he has no idea of what to look for and how to look for it, where to look for it. So um, in unified meditation, it's very important that uh, we perfect mind work in order to excel in soul work. As I mentioned to you earlier, there are many yogis who do not follow the six components of uh, unified meditation or equivalent. Instead, they directly jump to soul work and practice some of the meditation techniques that I will be talking to you about below. There is no problem in doing so, but um, as I told you, I believe it's a waste because um, even themselves, they will not be able to benefit fully and um, the world will be no better because they don't know anything about uh, how to uh, distribute their findings with their fellow human beings who are suffering. You will remember that I have been telling you many times that there is a very thin line between imagination and actual soul work. In the earlier chapters, I talked to you about all the things you can do with the soul, and that was pure imagination. Now, in order to cross that line, you need to perfect those uh, earlier five components. And then you might think it's your imagination, but it's actually soul work. You might remember also that um, I compared whether something that you uh, imagine doing with your soul would actually be uh, pure imagination or actual will have the, will have a real life effect is like a quantum uh, physics whereby the uh, photon will decide whether it's a particle or a wave. At that time, uh, you do not have the knowledge enough. Uh, of this chapter, so um, I had to um, leave this uh, possibility of uncertainty open. However, after reading this chapter and the earlier five components, I want to tell you that your uh, perfection level will determine whether what you uh, intend and imagine will be pure uh, imagination with no effects or it will have uh, effects in the physical world that is both inside of you as well as outside of you. The meditation techniques that I will talk briefly about below are practiced as standalones by many practitioners. 
meditators and yogis. You too can do that, but I highly recommend that um, you uh, practice the other meditation techniques that are categorized under the other five components in order to master soul work. In this chapter, as usual, I will talk about the various meditation techniques in the light of uh, unified meditation and uh, leave the uh, research of the actual practices, meanings of the um, techniques on your shoulders for research. We have talked about chakras uh, a lot earlier and uh, I told you that uh, I will be referring them to as uh, centers of consciousness or COC. The idea is to uh, activate those uh, COCs with your intention. There are mainly seven chakras. Each of them have got a particular um, characteristics and their activation leads to a particular sets of uh, consciousness. It means that um, by successfully activating a particular chakra, you will develop new sets of thinking, feeling, and you'll attract new kinds of people and circumstances. You'll also develop um, new concepts of life as well as uh, grow new kinds of uh, spiritual uh, qualities, extrasensory perceptions, and so on, which fall under the 13 components of consciousness. So uh, what we do is sit down close our eyes and um, move our uh, focus towards the chakra that uh, is uh, most uh, relevant to our needs at that time. For example, if you need to come up with uh, courage and vision, then uh, you try to wake up the third COC, if you want to um, develop a romantic nature and attract uh, somebody from the opposite sex, then uh, you try to wake up the second COC. If you are tired of the material world and uh, want to uh, have a quieter life so that um, you can um, meditate, then you will need to develop a um, sense of uh, repulsion towards the world of uh, money, status, and so on. For that, it would be a good idea to wake up the fourth chakra. If you want to develop uh, oratory skills, wake up the um, fifth COC. If you want to um, develop commanding power leadership and the ability to unite diverse communities then activate the sixth chakra finally if you want to uh, transcend this world and really leave your uh, material identity behind and uh, embrace an impersonal identity then uh, wake up the seventh chakra there are many ways to do this activation or waking up of the uh, cocs you can visualize them as uh, lotus flowers sounds you would have to um, try to hear the various vibrations that is recommended for that particular um, chakra of course at the beginning it's just your uh, imagination and yourself creating that sound sometimes uh, you can uh, visualize, visualize images of the residing god or goddesses. There are various gestures or mudras recommended for the various uh, chakras. And these are just some of the techniques and it's a very well practiced meditation. So I hope that you can do further research on this extensive uh, chakra meditation. As I told you earlier, Kundalini refers to the electric um, zap that uh, we receive. In their earlier days, they did not have a reference to 
being electrocuted because electricity was not discovered yet. So the nearest analogy that they had to this uh, sensation that they were uh, feeling during meditation was uh, the serpent uncoiling and um, biting. Usually uh, this um, electric zap come from any of the chakras or even outside the chakras because they are blessings from your old masters who are dead and ascended but uh, uh, the tradition is to uh, concentrate at the bottom of your spinal cord where it is thought that the original um, electric zap occurs yes it occurs there but uh, it's certainly not the first place where it occurs and uh, not and certainly not the last and only one there's nothing much you can do uh, to get the zaps except to be uh, using the proper postures, breathing techniques, and um, most important is uh, the quality of your mind work. And that, of course, depends on your focus and your unlinking capacity. For the electric zap to work, your mind would have to be in a state of uh, almost no mind. Kundalini cannot uh, work when your mind is disturbed either in terms of feelings or thoughts. So uh, Kundalini meditation is mostly about um, waiting by being quiet and uh, calming your mind, hoping for the zap to occur. Of course, it's not that easy. And um, that's why it's a very um, uncertain practice. It depends on your uh, past life karma as well as uh, the good karma that you are currently doing in your life. Many practitioners look for a shortcut and they try to get electric zaps from uh, living masters who, believe it or not, think that um, they can give uh, those uh, electric zaps as a service. They are as uh, befooled as their own followers. They even call it Shakti Pot. It is ridiculous, but uh, many people believe that uh, it can be done. It can be done, but uh, it certainly doesn't occur voluntarily. And uh, so many things are involved, especially past life karma, which we have no control on. And uh, we don't even have control on what this person has done uh, in this life that uh, would uh, allow him to uh, get that electric zap or not. So for now, just uh, close your eyes and um, visualize that um, the Ascendant Masters would send you some electric zap so you can make dramatic progress at the level of the nadis which is the um, spiritual nervous system as we discussed earlier i mentioned to you earlier that i used to visualize a lot um, in my early days of uh, stage performance and uh, it worked wonderfully for me because the audience would be uh, fascinated by my work now was it because uh, my performance was excellent or was it because of the visualization exercise i think uh, it was more because of the visualization exercise there was a connection with them that i felt and they felt me and that is why i got um, excellent reviews so visualization is all about closing your eyes and uh, just uh, fantasizing how you wish things happened it's not that hard but again if there is no mind work then it is just pure fantasy tantra is um, a highly controversial form of meditation because of uh, the um, way it um, encourages the use of um, alcohol drugs and sex in order to um, attain uh, higher levels of consciousness that said there are many versions of tantra certainly not all of them encourage being immoral in order to attain uh, enlightenment tantra has got a lot of uh, great features especially the use of uh, yantra mantra 
and Tantra. So it's basically a technology to attain uh, enlightenment using various diagrams, as we discussed earlier, and uh, sentences to repeat in our minds. The focus is uh, on soul work. In Tantra, we believe that uh, the soul has got uh, its own uh, identity and uh, senses, and that there is a spiritual world. And um, despite myself having read so many books on Tantra, I cannot uh, put a finger on exactly what it is Tantra, so I will not um, waste your time trying to convince you I'm an expert in Tantra, and I will leave the research to your good person. Osho wrote a book called um, Sambhog Se Samadhi, or in English, From Sex to Superconsciousness. Many people thought that um, it was a um, license to uh, be promiscuous, but they should read the book, and it's nothing like that. The title is a sensational like a clip bait nowadays. The point is um, it really works and um, your enlightenment is super accelerated. The idea is uh, to perform sexual acts by uh, focusing on your soul instead of your physical sensation. So if you get an orgasm, focus not on the physical um, enjoyment but uh, Use that energy from um, the orgasm to help you uh, activate the various chakras and encourage um, Kundalini to occur by widening the various uh, nadis or nerves through the uh, propulsion of the uh, energy from sex. I don't want to talk more about it because uh, most of the people are not uh, mature enough to uh, practice this. And definitely I will uh, write a book, especially on this when the day comes. For now, you know the principle. The sound of Om that uh, is written in the Hindu scriptures and used in so many uh, mantras has got an interesting origin. It's not an imaginary sound, but it's the sound that uh, yogis hear when uh, their uh, mind work reaches a state of no mind and total blankness. For that to be heard, you must have reached a state of breathlessness. And then you hear that uh, sound of uh, Om. I don't know if it's exactly pronounceable as Om, but I couldn't myself uh, think of a better way to uh, pronounce what I heard in my meditation. It's a continuous uh, sound that doesn't stop. Uh, to me, it sounded like uh, an electric motor that was rotating. Even now, if uh, I choose to hear that sound, I can, but uh, I don't practice that meditation since many years because uh, I uh, surpassed this uh, usage. In the scriptures, they talk about the flute of Krishna singing in Vrindavan, and uh, that's uh, the kind of sound that I'm talking about. Then all the gopis or the damsels are attracted to that sound. So this uh, unstricken sound that you can hear during deep meditation has a cleansing effect in you. It feels like it burns up all your sins. In fact, it actually does because it's a calming effect. So trying to hear that sound and uh, let it buzz in the various chakras of your body is a very powerful form of meditation. Since soul work is all about gaining godly uh, nature, it's very important that uh, we um, meditate on the various images of gods and goddesses. Just uh, take a picture of a uh, um, favorite god of yours. By favorite, I mean, um, a god whose um, personality and uh, character resonates with you and um, 
you feel connected to because of that. Thereafter, what happens is uh, you will um, feel that uh, you are like that particular god or goddesses. This is because of soul work, like we studied in um, the parallel of uh, magnetism in the spiritual world. Well, uh, by uh, focusing on the image of a goddess or a god, your uh, soul magnetizes itself in its image and you start to develop the various qualities even without yourself knowing. That is why all those uh, temples have got uh, so many um, statues of the various uh, divine entities to help us in this particular meditation. I myself meditated on um, the god Shiva and um, Krishna. That helped a lot in those days. Continuing from the earlier meditation, the next best thing is um, forget the image and uh, meditate on the impersonal qualities of that god or goddess. For example, Lord Shiva had the um, ability to um, drink poison without being killed. He proved himself when um, there was a churning of the ocean whereby um, the nectar was taken by the demigods, but the poison that came out of it, nobody wanted. And so Shiva took the decision to drink it. Now this quality uh, I meditated on a lot because uh, I just like that idea of uh, drinking poison that never nobody wanted and still be unaffected by it because of your meditation uh, skills. And then what happened in the years, decades later is that uh, as a counselor and motivator, I realized that um, people had so much poison inside of them and uh, they were unable to let that poison out. And as a result, they developed all kinds of psychological disorders, social misbehavior, and even they sabotage their own lives, carriers and other people's lives and carriers. And then I discovered by that um, when those people were able to uh, tell me their poisonous memories, then they would heal. It's as if the poison that they carried in them, I took it through my years and my um, listening skills. What I heard throughout the decades from uh, all those people suffering is horrible, disgusting, unimaginable. And I heard it firsthand. If anybody else listened to that, they would become sick, vomit. Many of them wouldn't know other thing than to go to the police or file a lawsuit on behalf of the victim. But most of the time, it's not what they want. However, for me, I took in the poison and I was unaffected. Those people, I... Uh, motivated and counseled, was so relieved that um, I just listened to them and took their pain without judging. And that was the most healing effect that they ever felt in their whole lives. In this way, I just give you an example of what it is to meditate on a quality of a god or a goddesses. And there are so many other qualities that I meditated on that would be beyond the scope of this book that I would uh, be unable to uh, elaborate on for the same reason I told you many times earlier. Again, um, like we did in the earlier components, we'll talk about the various uh, levels of what it means to do soul work. So in the first level, soul work would be uh, just about uh, releasing your stress. And um, it would be like going on a holiday in the spiritual world with your spiritual senses. In the level two hiking, soul work would be about um, exploring the spiritual world and um, participating in the various activities that happen out there, making friends, enjoying the view. You could even bring back some insights from that world. I know many people who meditate for many years 
and um, they um, have so many uh, interesting, uh, insightful um, ideas on uh, common day problems. The problem though is that it's not uh, planned or uh, consistent. This is because um, the practice is uh, just beginning now in level three the soul can actually create imaginary friends imaginary worlds like the egregores that i talked to you about earlier then um, the same insights that i talked to you earlier they come in more regular fashion consistently at this stage the meditator has got um, a soul that has almost reached boiling point and people can start feeling him. They can sense that something is different in that person. He would be filled with um, excitement. But still, that is not a permanent stage because uh, the daily hassles and uh, unexpected uh, problems in life cannot um, prevent this person from losing the ability to stay in the spiritual world, then he comes back to the material world and is again is despondent and lack lustre. Now, when this person is at the level of the flying plane, the uh, soul work can produce um, magic. It can be both um, synchronicities as well as um, the breaking of small laws of physics various uh, objects this around this person will make uh, unexpected sounds especially creaking ones it seems that uh, when a person reaches this level of soul work then um, the gods are conspiring with this uh, person to make his life easy and uh, smooth in nepali we have an expression even the ghosts are a slave to such a person. And this is uh, the stage that I'm talking about here. At the rocket level, this person has um, enjoyed so much gains from his spiritual work that uh, he would be satiated. Then uh, he would have a very big aura that uh, spreads out uh, energies of calm and... Uh, wisdom around him it's very powerful i mentioned to you earlier in this book about a yogi who asks for a blessing that uh, he doesn't want to know that people have benefited from him but he is uh, okay with uh, people being affected by his presence in a positive way and being healed so this is the level of rocket i'm talking about if this person has uh, got uh, great mind power then uh, his words will be soothing disarming and um, unifying in this way people will not only feel calm but um, their heads will also be able to solve problems that uh, they were unable to solve till, till then. At the final level, soul work is about um, doing everything above despite all the odds that uh, we face in our daily lives. It's like being able to uh, spread the love despite being thrown out, hatred from the world, drinking the poison of someone who wants to destroy or has destroyed you. It is also about being able to give insights and uh, dramatic solutions to uh, gigantic problems on demand. At this uh, swimming stage, the yogi is so merged in the meta soul that um, he feels that he's everywhere and uh, everything is working in a synchronicity, like a gigantic orchestra where he is the maestro.